What's up guys, Shane here from Fugitive 3D Printing and today I'm going to show you yet another extruder mod for the Cube 3. Welcome back guys. So, I did two videos with the Cube 3 already. So first I showed you how to modify your firmware. You guys check that video out here. That way you can reuse the chips that come on the proprietary cartridges, one of these. There's a little chip back here. And that is how it tells it how much filament is left on the spool. Well, by using the firmware modification, you can then have it no longer update that chip. So it always remains at whatever percentage it is. As long as it isn't zero, you're good to go and you can get all the prints you want. And then a second video I showed you was how to go ahead and modify one of these cartridges to go ahead and use a, a normal PTFE tubing and add a few little extra pieces in here. And that way you can get off of the little one that they have, which is very hard to reload. And it also makes it a lot more easier troubleshooting and maintenance because you can then have access to all the parts. Now, while that was a pretty good idea, it definitely wasn't ideal. And I found a much better solution. And that better solution is this. Well, mostly this, it's this and this and this other piece that we're gonna modify to put in there. Now, this is a very interesting extruder. We're gonna call this the extruder hub because the extruder technically is this, like these are the gears, the extruder, the extruder is built in to the side of the printer. So right here is where the actual motor is that pushes the filament through using these gears. Now this, uh, this print here, I'll show you guys the link to the Thingiverse. It's a fantastic build. It's not the easiest thing to have to do though. Not printing is very easy, that's not the problem. The problem is the little switcher that's in here. Now you can have three different chips, I, A, and P. Can't remember what the I is, I think that was uh, the 3D systems, I think that was their like dissolvable filament that they had, and then P obviously is PLA, and A is ABS. And you can just push down, twist it, and just go to the next one without any problem. Now well, that's very fun and dandy, uh, the problem is the spring that's required is a spring from your nozzle. So you obviously need another nozzle. You actually need two more nozzles because you need two more springs, you need one for each side. On top of the springs that are already in the nozzles that we modified. So you need to get your hands on four total of these cartridges. Nowadays that is a little bit tough, do understand that. but. There's still enough floating around. You can get on the forums as well and find out if anybody has any of those springs or someone might actually know one to link to that's very similar. If I find one, I will definitely put it down in the video description. But as of right now as this is recording, I do not know any other way to get these springs except to get them from the hot ends for this printer. Now once we have that, that gives you the kind of the little leverage action in this, which is great. And then we need the actual, the gears, the hub of this uh, cartridge, this metal hub, we need this. And we're gonna go ahead and modify this part because one way that a lot of people were doing the way that I did it before is I was just taking the tube out of this and going into uh, the next P, going into a bigger piece of PTFE tubing and, and going that route. That ends up being quite a pain for troubleshooting. Now, the way that I'm gonna go today is we're actually gonna just go ahead and tap a PTFE push fitting straight into the top of this. Now that's gonna give us a very secure connection and it's gonna eliminate a lot of extra pieces. Now I'm combining from the forms two different ideas, combining them into this idea because I think it's better. Now in order to make this work, this the top of this piece right here ha was covered and it had a bunch of uh, holes in it and the filament would come through the bottom, go up through it, and then go out. Well, in order to get the PTFE fitting to fit, this is going to eventually go here, and if the PTFE fitting gets screwed into there like that, that needs to be cut out, which is why I went and cut that out. I could have made it a little more fine, you know, fine tune of where it's cut out at, but I, you know, just said the heck with it, and I could have removed this hole, and I could have removed, oh, this one we're actually gonna need. But either way, it's gonna work with for these purposes. Now, the next thing to have to do is we're gonna have to, well, let's um, get my tools here real quick. All right, and now in order to tap this, we're gonna need a tap set. 
Now I don't have a, a true metric tap set, sadly, but that's okay. The one that I have here will work for the uh, push fitting that I have, and I'm actually gonna be using this. This is a 1032. I had uh, used a piece of tape on it because I used it on the other one to make that work before I did it to ensure that it would work. And yeah, so I'm using a 1032 tap, which seems to work out just fine. You don't need to worry about any type of uh, lubrication or anything for this because we're doing a very small amount. And we're actually gonna go ahead and mark how deep we wanna go just because we don't wanna go too deep. We still need some of the uh, fitting parts that are in there because we're gonna be using a very small piece of PTFE tubing, the, the three millimeter one, and we're gonna use the collar that's on that. Now that collar is important and so is that piece of PTFE tubing because once the filament goes into here, we need a way to guide it up and out. Without that PTFE fitting in there, it, it's near impossible. And I, I tried it for probably a good two hours to see if I could get it to work out well. I could not get it to work out well. So that's why I'm insisting that we go ahead and leave that in there to make our lives so much easier. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this apart first. There are two different size screw heads in this which make it super duper annoying. It's the first one and the second set. Okay, so now once we peel this open, here's what we have. So here is the little piece that we're gonna keep and we're actually gonna have to cut this down a little bit more to make it work out for us. And we're gonna take out the gear as well. Now, where we're gonna drill is we're gonna drill only to here. Because again, we wanna have this collar still fit in there, which still allows the filament to be guided up and into that and then out of our top extrusion or our top uh, PTFE. So we're gonna go ahead and get our bit here and we're just gonna measure, just so it goes in there a little bit. And I'm gonna put my piece of tape down right here so that I know we're only going in that deep. Well, that's what, a quarter inch? So we're going in a very small amount, which is actually almost the full thread on the push fitting, which is great for us. So we're gonna get all the way in. And now I need the push fitting. So the one I'm using is actually an M5. You could make an M6 work. I think it's a little bit too big, but this is an M5 push fitting. And I'll put a link down below to where you guys get these. They're super cheap, like a few dollars for like five or 10 of them on Amazon or eBay, even cheaper AliExpress if you wanna wait a year. But uh, these work out really well. So we're gonna go ahead and reassemble the uh, housing here and we're just gonna put it in. Gotta get the extruder gear in there. Now make sure that you really do mark that, uh, the tap, because if you go too far, you're gonna end up hitting the extruder gear. And we don't want to do that at all because then you're just gonna have problems because finding a replacement gear is probably impossible these days because this printer's not made anymore, it's not supported anymore. It's just very old, but there's so many people out there to have this. This will work out really well for them. So we're gonna go ahead and take this, we're gonna go ahead and do our tap and we're gonna go nice and slow, but we have to actually drill it first. So let me get my drill bit. And I'll be right back, because I left it out somewhere. So obviously first we have to drill. And I'm using an eighth inch bit here, and I'm also going to uh, snag a piece of tape from this and mark how deep I'm drilling, because again, we definitely don't want to go too deep and then not be able to use what we're trying to do here. And you need to be careful also because if you have a drill press, it's probably the best. I don't have a drill press right now. So it, it, a drill press would be best because this might end up wanting to go real far. So you just gotta be really careful when you drill this. Uh, I recommend doing it not handheld, like I'm about to do it, but doing it down on the surface, something like that. But I can make it work. It's simple as that. We now have our hole, it's in line. And, um, do also be aware, this is extremely soft aluminum, so that is just going to eat right into it. And then now, I need to go one size up. I need to go one size larger. So we're gonna use a 9 64ths now, because that 1 8 was too small. Couldn't remember which one I actually used. Probably should have wrote it down. There we go, that's better. And now we're gonna go ahead and tap it. All right, and once you have that in there, you see there it is. It could've go a little bit deeper, but uh, it's, it's all right. And um, 
So now we have to get that little piece of PTFE tubing and we need to just clip off a little bit off the top here. So we're just going to do this here and we're just going to go like snip. We're going to make sure it's nice and rounded on the way out because it's going to just sit in there right in front of that PTFE tubing so that the filament goes right up into there without a problem. And the nice thing is you can just snap that right back together and that there it is, it's done. So now in order to get this in there properly, we're gonna go ahead and unthread this. Make sure there's nothing in there, it's not, okay. And to assemble, we're gonna take the uh, this part right here, this, the, the printed part, this slides in. You kind of sometimes have to give it a little bit of the goose because there is support underneath here and that just gets slides right down in there. All four holes match up at the back. This matches up in there just well. And then we're gonna get our piece of PTFE e tubing. Set that in there. Get our plate. Flip it over. And we're gonna go ahead and use the, uh, the flat heads. I'm only using two on the other one. Uh, it seems to work out just fine. But if you have four, it's obviously, I guess, preferable. But two seems to be just fine. I also don't have any more flat heads, or pan heads, I should say, to put in there. So that holds that in there just like that. And now, let's get out our chip. So as you can see here, that's how it looks. Well, let's put this in first, I guess. I didn't take into account that back plane. So I will fix that for the version I update for you guys, but I totally forgot about that. So now we're just gonna go snip. And we're gonna go snip. Oh man, this, uh, this print's pretty tough. All right, so I'll measure that and I'll go ahead and take out that section there. That way uh, you guys will have a proper printed version. It's tight in there now. And there it is. Now this, right here goes on the top and we're gonna have to grab some M3 screws to attach that and then after that all we gotta do is take care of the chip. I'm just gonna use some 10 mil uh, socket head M3s and I'll use three of them because the fourth hole is gone since I changed this and you just tighten that in there. And it goes right into the print. It's a nice tight and secure connection I mean, it doesn't have to be anything crazy anyways. All right, there's our three screws. So now we are almost complete. We just gotta add the chip. Now just remember, our middle one there is gonna be for PLA. And we're gonna go ahead and get a X-Acto knife. And our chip is on the back of the carriage. So you just need to carefully get into the side and pluck that off. Now remember your orientation, which is like this. So the longer one is on the left, the shorter one is on the right, with the bottom right corner being the blank spot. And that's just gonna go right into this. It's a super snug connection. So also be sure that you don't chip your chip, I guess. I do wish this had a little bit more tolerance to it. But that should do it just like that. And now for the test, we're gonna put it in here and see if it works. I'm gonna make sure that it's uh, recognized first. Let me clean up a little bit. It's hot in here, hot in here. All right, so power. Now the printer is a little bit loud, so apologize for that. And let's turn it on. I had already gone ahead and made the tubing for the top, so that's already done. Uh, now we're gonna go to setup, and we're gonna do change cartridge, and we're gonna do the not installed one. Wait for that to prepare itself. Let's right, so put that in. Check, we're gonna add in the bit, and that just clicks right in there. 
Could you click right in there? There it goes. All right, we're on the PLA. Everything else matches up. We hit OK. Now, you need to find some filament to throw in there real quick. To make sure it actually feeds. So you're going to cut off at your angle. You normally would. And try to straighten it out a little bit. And then you're going to want to feed it right up and in. And you'll feel when it hits the gears, because if you push up and try to pull back down, you'll feel the gear had already kind of caught it a little bit. And then once this finishes heating up, it should take it right in. One thing I did forget to talk about was priming. Uh, so I use a, just a little star bit, throw it in the back. And usually you can do it by hand, or you can just use an actual, just a, um, a bit holder. But you should just be able to turn it and pull that filament up and out like so. So there it is right there coming out. Uh, the thing to do is not just clip it one direction, clip it in two or three directions, give yourself a nice point because sometimes it will wander if you only give it that one 45 you know, to 60 degree cut. You wanna give yourself a little bit more of a point, kind of like an arrow, put it that way. And now I'll connect this. So I, I cheat a little bit in order to make sure that this uh, again, I want the greatest chance of success. So yeah, again, this is early. I'll put links to everything down below, links to the forms where I'd gotten both of these ideas. Though Those guys were great. Uh, I think actually, actually both of them might've been Tommy D on the form, but either way, look down in the description. There's a lot of information on the Cube 3 down there. So if you have one and you're looking somewhere to start, please go to the forms, make a post, read what's out there. Lots of people are still working on this printer, so it's good to see. And again, it's not a, if you pick it up for pretty cheap, why not you know, play with it for a while? So if you guys enjoyed the video, I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Talk in the comments down below what I can do better next time. If you guys want to stay in tune what's going on, make sure you become a subscriber and hit that bell icon. That way you get an email notification anytime I upload new content. If you guys want to do me financially, down below there's going to be a Patreon link right below me down there. Go ahead and click that. Donate a dollar or more. I appreciate it. Get you access to my Patreon feed and get you access to the after show, which I do after almost all of my new videos. So go ahead down there and check that out. You guys do other ways. There's one time stream labs, things like that. Or there's all my fit links down there. If you want to go ahead and use those, there's some fit links for some of the things that I bought to use this or to do this with and go ahead and update your bookmarks with those. A little slice of what you buy comes back here to help me out the channel. And I appreciate you guys doing that. So thank you for watching until next time. Happy printing.